we need to talk about Ayo Debray, who's also known as the People's Princess, also known as a warming superstar, and also known as the person I would like to be when I grow up. <laughs> but for real though. Hey! Hey! How y'all doing? Cat cam! Cat cam! Cat cam! It's like I'm blocking him and that's like a reveal. Cat cam! <laughs> Today and over the next few days and over like the next week, depending on how long this video takes, <laughs> I will be embarking on the journey of watching Ayo Debris' entire filmography. Entire with an asterisk, you know, a little star there, because I only want to watch the stuff where she has like sort of a significant-ish role in it, like main role, supporting role. I don't want to watch anything where she's in it for like two seconds. Also, there's just some stuff that she's been in, like some shorts and like some web series I just cannot find, so I can't watch those because I cannot find them. Sorry. Um, after deep diving into her IMDb page, I found 10 things that I will be watching, and I'm going to do it in chronological order so from the beginning of her pretty little career to where we are right now let's go through the things i'll be watching let's do like a brief little you know timeline of the things i'll be watching i have my computer here because i forget things and i don't want to and here we go so first up we will be watching io and rachel are single which is like this tv miniseries for like comedy central and it's on youtube now it's like a, it was like a little three episode thing and i'll be watching that first that was in 2020 so we'll be beginning with that next i'll be watching dickinson season two she was in it for six episodes in 2021 i attempted to watch dickinson when it first came out i was just like not not really into it so then i stopped watching it but i will be watching only season two in those six episodes that i was in for this video because it said does say she has like a nice little role in that cat cam Aww. that's why i'm sitting on the floor because he's in the bed and it's like i'm not gonna you know this is his world and i'm just living in it next up we'll be watching hello goodbye and everything in between which is a netflix movie and i know she has like a supporting ish role in that so i will be watching then we're going to go into theater camp which is like kind of the same thing like supporting ish role not the main but like she's in it enough where i'm like i'll watch that also i have already seen theater camp and i will watch it again for her i will watch it again for her yes yes then we're gonna go into something called mulligan which is like an animated series on netflix and she's in it for like a lot of it like i think nine out of the ten episodes so of course we'll be tapping into that then we're gonna go into the sweet east which is a movie that i'm i it's a 50 50 shot i don't know if she has like a biggish role in this or a smallish role in this i don't know and i can't really find a lot of information about it i know she was in the trailer and i don't know if that was just like a little tease like oh yeah she's in this movie and then she's only gonna end up in it for like 10 minutes or something I hope I don't spend six dollars and she is only in this movie for 10 minutes, but we will see <laughs> Next we're gonna go into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie I know she has a main role in that. She's literally the main girl So of course we have to watch then we're gonna go into bottoms because obviously and I have already seen that But I will be watching because like I said, obviously we have to watch that next up should be big mouth But I kind of refuse to watch that show Um, No for the questions. No for the statement. That's that on that Then we're gonna go into clone high Which is another animated series and she's in it from top to bottom 20 of the 20 episodes of course we're gonna have to watch and to end up this video i will be watching the bear and technically in the timeline it wouldn't be at the end it's like somewhere in the middle because like season two came out like june 2023 but because they're filming season three and season four they're filming both back to back apparently um since they're filming that right now it feels more fitting to do a bear rewatch at the end and watch that then because they're filming that right now so that's that and that's what we're gonna be doing we'll see how long this takes let's just get in I just got back from this dinner thing. I watched Io and Rachel are single during the car ride and let's freaking talk about it. If you see me looking this way, it's because my computer's here. Uh, I have some notes in my notes app so I don't forget things that I want to say as per usual. Okay, so first things first. Hi, this is editing me quickly jumping in to say that I meant to read a like synopsis, summary, whatever you want to call it for the show before I went into my notes, but then I forgot to read it. So I'm going to read well, I'm going to read the summary that I wanted to read right now. Okay, here we go. Iota Debris and Rachel Center are perpetually unlucky in love. Whether they're swiping on the apps or making connections IRL, Iota and Rachel just can't seem to make sense of dating. Brought to you by Comedy Central. That's what the show's about. Back to me talking about it now. Bye. First things first. It was so short and I'm so sad. Like it was literally three, four to five minute episode things um, on YouTube. I'm in dire need of more of this duo happening exponentially. And yes, I know bottoms exist. Yes, and they worked on that together. Yes, but I just need more. I need more. I need more of it. I need them to be cranking out things every year or something. Please, I need it. And it's kind of crazy because like I said, it was way too short and I really want more. And it came out during like, it came out 2020, peak COVID. So I wonder like if COVID didn't happen, would there have been a chance for this to become something bigger and science point yes because it just like i feel like it had such potential to be something back then and still now like if they want to if they want to run it back i would not be mad and yeah let's do it <laughs> literally keep these two working together forever five ever for all of eternity keep these two working together now let's go kind of like episode through episode even though they were, there was only three episodes and they were very very short 
but I do have something to say about all of them. Minor things, very little things, whatever. So in the first episode titled Double Date, I fully thought that their partners were gonna fall in love with each other because I've seen that trope many a times, but they didn't. They just be besties and then decide to set each other up with their siblings, which is still kind of fun, kind of funny. And honestly, no, that's actually like even more hilarious. They're like, hey, you're so cool. Like we're besties right now. You should get with my sister. And then the other one's like, oh my God, yes, bestie. You should also get with my sister. Even though they're literally, they were both in relationships with I and Rachel, kind of crazy kind of fun <laughs> oh my goodness there was one monologue moment io had in this first episode that literally reminded me of bottoms if you know like little improv monologue moment from bottoms i'm talking about like if you know you know but i will insert the one from this episode because it's just i was just like oh my gosh it's actually so i'm getting deja vu <laughs> okay they're literally best friends i know it's perfect we're gonna be couple friends which will strengthen our individual relationships which will in turn strengthen the group and the course of events will only naturally lead to us all getting married swap the kids one day because they're all mixed race they don't know who their parents are they can't break up with us because if they even try is that a turn -off? and then in the second episode called dating trends this was my favorite moment out of the entire episode insert it here thank you hey look it's not like i'm a player i really like you you know and kate from the diner anna from papa john's shauna from the microbrewery allison from the bakery like when it closes and they throw the donuts off wait does that mean you have a phone for me? Save the best for last. Boom! Ha ha! What the hell is this? This is the thickest phone I've ever seen in my life. Ha ha ha! Yeah, so funny. That felt really weird to do. I think the third episode though, I think the third episode was my favorite. Solely for these three moments, which I'll insert all back to back to back. Enjoy. I swear, I'm going to meet one guy tonight at this party who doesn't already have a girlfriend. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> What? If I date a shitty guy and things go poorly, it's not my fault, and then I never have to look inward. Wait, Rachel. Oh! <laughs> They're here. Thank God. I was about to look inward. You saw that. It was whew, very close. It might be good if you give it a shot. Please just date him. You should. Rachel, I can't. The things I've seen. Hey, baby. I miss you. No, 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 no. So Where are you going? Okay, well, your loss. I was gonna project a whole bunch of things onto you. Like what? This is a podcast for men, and men need this. Yeah, get out. You know what? You can't kick me out. This is my father's apartment that I live in rent free. Not anymore. Oh, fine. Io, let's go. Wait. <laughs> Boys, yeah. boys, 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 boys. Yeah, get into it. Seriously, though, I yeah. feel like there's not a space for men to talk about the reality of how that. raw our emotions are. Can I be real? Please. I'm a guy's girl. Yeah. Girls are annoying. I, I want to hang out with my boys. <laughs> If those moments don't prove why this show deserves absolutely everything and more and it needs to be something bigger then i don't know what will prove that to you to conclude run that show back bring it back keep those two working together i will support whatever those two do together forever i just need to see them together all the time thank you and that's it next up we're watching big and sin and that's gonna be a very different vibe i think season two six episodes i will catch on to whatever's happening i don't know hopefully there's a recap because i have not seen the show i've only seen one episode i don't want to watch season one just to watch her in season two for six episodes so i'll just catch on and be confused or whatever but anyway see you in the next clip thank you first things first i would like to say my glasses are doing like this weird little thing above my eyes like this weird like little shadow and i hate it but i don't feel like changing the setup right now because it's very late and um yeah for the sake of comfort we're gonna just deal with it and i hate that like anytime i do this kind of lighting it does that but like i said for the sake of comfort we're just gonna deal with that yes but anyway it's the middle of the night i just finished the six episodes of dickinson that i had to watch with io debris in it and now we're gonna talk about it Woo! and also i know i look absolutely crazy but like i said it's the middle of the night and you know this is just cozy comfort you know it's more intimate this way <sighs> right okay <laughs> let's just go into freaking dickinson before we start though i would just in case you don't know about dickinson i'm going to read a brief description as brought to you by wikipedia wedding writer emily dickinson uses her outsider's perspective to explore the constraints of society gender and family in the 19th century yes now let's talk about it also i just want to say before i start talking about it to any dickinson lovers stands etc etc out there 
I am sorry for the things I'm about to say about your beloved show. I'm sorry, but it just has to be said. I'm sorry. I have notes. Before I talk about Io's involvement with the show, let's just talk about the show in general and briefly the six episodes I had to watch, like in an overall overarching vibe way, whatever. Um, it was boring. I'm sorry. It was boring. I did not like it. And maybe that's my fault because like I said, I just watched a show solely for her. And in a way, I knew that I probably wasn't going to like it because as I said, I tried watching the show one time before. I watched one episode, didn't like it so i stopped so maybe this is on me like i already knew i was gonna like the show so obviously like would those opinions really change the story itself storylines i was kind of like not into the characters some of the acting was a bit like cringe and just the characters themselves i'm just like mm hmm right right obviously it takes place in like the 18th what no it takes place in the 19th century so it's very not modern but they tried so hard to make things like modern mainly just like the dialogue and just like some of the terms and like lingo they decided to put in the show it just didn't make it feel better maybe for some people it made it feel more relatable but to me it just made it feel a little bit cringe sorry to say it i don't know i'm sorry one goodish thing about the show is that the music was kind of eating and i definitely discovered some new like artists and songs because of like the soundtrack and the songs that they were using throughout the episodes but there did feel like there was a bit of a disconnect between like the vibes of what was happening in the show and then the vibes of the songs they decided to use the scene that we just saw and the song was just playing like something's not adding up here what's going on still good music though <laughs> but that's stuff i'm gonna say about the show because this isn't this isn't a dickinson recap talk about this is a io a debris talk about so let me just talk about her and her involvement and her character in the show right right so as i was doing like research i not research research as i was doing research on the show i found out that the role that she played in season two was literally written for her when she joined the writer's room in season two which is so cool props to her that's like so freaking cool also like i said she was in the writer's room of the show and she literally had a main writing credit for episode eight. Literally after the title sequence, it said written by, and then it was another girl's name and then her name. And it also makes sense that it was for episode eight because episode eight was literally my favorite episode of the episodes with her that I had to watch for this season. So it made sense. Anyway though, she literally served down as Hattie from the first moment she was on my screen, which I will insert here. Hattie, oh, I thought I heard your voice. Hi, is there something that you need? Yes. We're having a seance. Oh, another one. Yeah. Can you stay? Why do you want her to stay? She's a medium. I thought she was the maid. Okay. I'm a maid, a medium, a washerwoman, and a seamstress. Mm -hmm. I also write plays and autobiographical sketches, mm -hmm. sing in a quartet, sell my own hair care products, and create a unique line of floral centerpieces. Wow. <laughs> I'm just a freelancer. Oh, you're a very powerful clairvoyant, and I need to commune with the spirits ASAP. You were so amazing last time. We talked to so many ghosts. Yeah, I don't need to talk to any more dead white people. Hattie, please. We can pay you. Oh, well then, yes, I would love to stay. Great. Literally from the first moment she was on my screen, she was serving. And actually that moment that I just put in is probably my favorite moment of hers from the entire show. Like, it was just absolutely so funny. And I loved it. Okay, next. The only storyline I cared about was literally Hattie and Henry. And it sucks because that was like the most underrated storyline. Like, that was the storyline that got the least bit of screen time, which was so sad because it was the only storyline that I cared about. And I feel like it was the only storyline that actually had stakes to to it and had important things at hand to it like literally slavery civil war oppression them trying to like rise up like starting their own little like anonymous newspaper like that's so important why aren't we having more screen time but i guess it also makes sense because the show is called dickinson it's about emily dickinson i don't really know that much about her to be completely honest but from what i was seeing in the show the stuff that she was doing didn't really correlate to that going on so it makes sense why that wasn't the biggest storyline or like got a lot of screen time but I just wish it did because it was my favorite part. I am so tired and I feel like I'm not making sense, but pushing through, pushing through. So yeah, Henry and Hattie, that was the only storyline I really cared about. So going back to episode eight, which I said was the best episode that I watched, that was the only episode that delved deeper into that storyline. It still like barely like grazed the surface, but still it was like diving into it a bit more than any other of the episodes. Literally, they were just having a fun little key in the barn, a little party, and I absolutely loved that episode. And I love that for them. They were just having a ball. And typically I don't really like people 
period pieces that focus on like slavery and blah 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 solely for the reason that i feel like all the time the black african-american characters are just it's just depression trauma just all bad things happening to them but this i like that it was more lighthearted, like they were literally having a fun little ball in the barn long story short in conclusion i love episode eight <laughs> and also talking about episode eight miss ayo in that gold dress my girl in that gold dress a wooga 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 loved it also there was another moment that she had in this episode that i will insert the clip because it's just absolutely so funny and another reason why episode eight is just my favorite episode and it makes sense that she co-wrote it and it makes sense why it's my favorite insert the clip here is that dude really talking to himself yeah that's my boss what's his deal <laughs> You don't even know how many white secrets I'm keeping. And then finally, episode 10 was the season finale. And it also said she, that she was in it. So I watched it. And I'm actually very, very upset that I watched it. Because she was actually barely even in it she actually said no lines in it it was only a little scene of her face reading a newspaper i watched 32 minutes of that to see her reading a newspaper for 10 seconds girl excuse me anyway though in conclusion watch episode 8 if you would like to watch dickinson solely for iowa debris that's what i learned from this i don't know what i'm saying it's one o'clock in the morning now and i'm sorry if none of this is actually even making sense i'm sorry i think that's all i have to say i think it's everything that i need to say about the show like i said in conclusion watch episode 8 if you would like to see iowa debris serve down boots house and this next up we're watching hello goodbye and everything in between i'm pretty sure i hope there's a different vibe i hope she's in it for more screen time but no matter what i know whatever role whatever line she's given she will serve it down so no doubt in my mind that's it bye bye, -bye. i need to go to sleep bye bye, -bye. <laughs> All right, so I just watched Hello, Goodbye, and Everything in Between last night, and now it's the next day, and I'm let's talk about it. Hello, this is once again editing me, jumping in to read the summary of this movie because I forgot to do it when I was recording, so what else is new? Okay, so I'm going to read the summary of this movie as brought to you by wikipedia slash google thank you claire and aiden make a pact to break up before college with no regrets and no heartbreaks however one epic goodbye date may offer them a last chance at love i don't know why i read it like that but it feels right so i'm just going i'm gonna double down on it and stick to it okay thank you bye back to the video bye 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 first i'll go into like my random like thoughts and like notes about the movie overall it was okay overall it was good definitely giving teen teen movie just like the way like some of the dialogue was written and then just like kind of like the story itself it very much gave like to all the boys i love before vibes mixed with kind of like work it vibes like that kind of netflix teen romance movie and i was very surprised that i did not see an awesomeness tv like production credit on there because it was truly giving like awesomeness tv like had a little bit of a hand in this but they didn't and i'm very surprised and to go along with that if i was in high school i think i would have definitely like eaten this movie up just like i did with to all the boys i love before when i was like a sophomore in high school i was like oh my god this movie is my personality trait i love it the books i love you and also this movie was a book did not read it, but I have read something else by that author which I was surprised to see that she wrote this book and then also the book that I had read by her because two very different vibes this is random and like unimportant but like you cannot put Jordan Fisher in a movie and not expect him to be singing dancing singing and dancing singing or dancing or usually both because he was doing both in this movie and I don't think I've ever seen a movie or a tv show or anything with this man and he's not singing or dancing and I don't mean that in the bad way it's like he has the talent like you know utilizes talents because he is a singer he's a dancer he is a performer and freaking utilize it. Also to speak on Jordan Fisher a little more, I need to see him in like an age appropriate rom-com. Not saying that like he's like oh my god he's a bag of bones like he's so old why is he playing high schooler but he is like almost like 30 so like why are you playing high schooler but in the sense of like I need him in something that is just like an adulter rom-com like a love rosy vibes or a set it up vibes like something that just does not take place in high school something where he is an older person late 20s mid 20s 30s something like that I need him in a rom-com like that he is so rom-com boy he should be in a age appropriate rom-com please and thank you things are like kind of out of order but I think this is my final thought so let me just say it um I do love 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 a movie vibe where it takes over like where it takes place only like over the course of one night or like one day or like one little like set of hours like I do love a movie vibe like that and this kind of did it well for the most part i didn't mind it in conclusion of my general movie thoughts it was an okay movie if i was in high school i probably would have liked it more not to fault this movie it's just not meant for my age demographic <laughs> i talk like i'm like 40 years old like i'm only like 23 like it's fine but yeah that's all i have to say on that movie now let's go into io's role in it yeah 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 she was literally in the first scene of the movie like she had the first lines basically and from that moment i was like okay this is gonna cook and for the most part she cooked the movie itself iffy on the cooking <laughs> iffy on the amount of cooking that it did but she cooked down in this mm -hmm. full course meal one may say i hate 
the way I'm talking right now. But yeah, she was the first scene. I knew it was, I knew she was gonna be gold in this. She literally had basically the first line, which was awesome. Her and Nico Haragas, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, I'm sorry. Their comedic dynamic was so awesome in this. Perhaps the times where like they were kind of like interacting with each other and like talking or like making jokes with each other or like being the comedic relief, that was like the best part of this movie. That writing was the best part. And I feel like that's mainly because it was only parts that really didn't feel like super cheesy and cringe, which is usually hard with like comedic moments in movies because I feel like they're always like kind of cheesy and cringe but somehow like them two together or like her saying something or him saying something it wasn't trying too hard to be funny it was just like random funny lines or just like some delivery on the line I'm just like oh my gosh that's actually so hilarious and let me insert a little compilation right here i forgot to leave my mark i'm pretty sure you did that when you streaked at that soccer game well, well yeah i mean you know i like to show my school spirit everybody saw it you're ding dong my guy hi you're there's so much paint and no towel Okay, well... Well, thank like, you. Not, what are you gonna do? Wipe out my jacket? I thought you came up Who with your shoulder you? out. Who raised you? Go to the bathroom. Okay, all right. Next, anytime she was on my screen, it was awesome. Look at that one Lady Gaga video of her being like, awesome, showtime, blah, 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 you know? I'm actually surprised at the amount of screen time she got. Like, she was pretty much in it for, like, I'll say, like, half of the movie. Or, like, literally most of the movie. It was also a very short movie, which I'm, I'm kind of glad about. It was, like, an hour 24, which was great. Perfect length. But, um, she was in a lot of scenes. Or she had a... She was there a lot. And maybe I'm just scarred by Dickinson and the amount she wasn't in it that I'm just like, oh my god, she was here for like 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, like she was in it for the whole movie. But it did feel like she was in it a lot, I will say. Um, next, her character is very much the black best friend trope, which we've seen like a thousand times portrayed in media at this point in time. But at the same time, I feel like her character also had a separation from the main character, if that makes sense. Like her character's only role or like purpose wasn't just to support the main character and like help her go through what she was going through. Like I feel like she also had her own wants and needs specifically like anytime there was her and Nico's character Scotty like anytime they were talking I feel like that that was like kind of separate from the vibe of what was going on with the main girl and the main boy and then she also kind of got her own little minor love storyline in it very underdeveloped very like oh she has a crush on this girl let's just put them together but I will still take it. Overall, in conclusion, she was great in this. Loved it. Loved her in it. Don't know if I love the movie, but like I said, it, it was It's not meant for me. This movie's not meant for me, but I loved her in it, and that's all that matters. Don't panic. I'm here. Okay, and so is James Bond. You can't control everything, Aiden. You can't aid in your way out of situations. Aid in my way out of situations. What in you the world? Please know tell me what, what you mean I by think that. you know what I mean. I have, no, I have no clue. You just use my name as a verb. What well, does it mean? Well, but too positively, when one, an Aiden, for example, behaves in a sort of manner where, you know, you sort of, um, you know, and then oh. things kind of go your way. I think that's all I have to say. Next up, we are watching Theater Camp. Oh my gosh, next up, we're watching Theater Camp, and I'm excited for that one. I already know how much she's in this, but it's okay because the movie itself is just so freaking good, and I'm excited to watch that. Okay, bye. <laughs> I just finished watching theater camp and let's freaking talk about it also i want to address something we're halfway through this video and i'm just now deciding oh my goodness how cool would it be if i kind of like match the vibe of the movie like my outfit when i'm talking about the movie like matches the vibe i just now decided to do that so i'll be doing it for the rest of the video this is it for right now i've tried to embody io's character in this and she like really was mainly just wearing a lot of flannels i don't own flannels anymore because i've moved past that phase of my life and this is the closest thing i have to one it's not really flannelly at all but the thought was there and that's all that matters anyway we're gonna just jump into talking about this so first i literally keep forgetting to read the summaries and like descriptions of like the movies and like shows so i'm going to read this one i'm not gonna forget this time this is brought to you by wikipedia eccentric staff members of an upstate new york theater camp must band together when their beloved founder falls into a coma we're just gonna jump right in i'm gonna do my general movie thoughts and then we'll move into my io movie thoughts so let's just get into it i freaking love this movie it's great literally this is my first time watching it since i watched it in the theater back in like july i think it came out sometime in like july or something I think um yeah that was the first time I watched it and I'm so like I loved this viewing experience that I just had because literally when I was watching the theater it was like kind of packed ish in there like there was a nice amount of people in there so I felt like I couldn't lull as much as I wanted to I feel like I couldn't react in the ways that I wanted to react and now during this rewatch oh I reacted I reacted and I loved it this movie is not even long I think it's like an hour 30 hour 25 hour 30 but it literally took me two hours to watch this because something about me is that when a funny moment 
it happens on screen like i will have to rewind it and play it back like 10 times until the funniness is like wiped out of it anytime a funny moment happens like i have to replay it a bunch a bunch a bunch of times until it's no longer funny or until i just i'm like okay we can move on now that's what i did for like so many parts of this movie because this movie is just so funny and i love it so much it hit perfectly the second time around it's just a really really good movie i love 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 a mockumentary like keep making mockumentaries they are so good to me they're so good to me and ask me to name one right now i cannot and my my mind is running blank but i just love me a mockumentary no further comments on that overall yeah i just love this movie so so much the comedic timing is just so perfect in this and everyone like in their specific roles were just perfect every actor was serving down with their character in their role they just perfect casting i will say perfect freaking casting now we can move on because i have nothing else to say generally about this movie in conclusion that movie's really good and you should watch it now let's move on to my io notes for this she had a very minimal role slash screen time in this but it was okay because like i said i still love this movie so much so like when she was off the screen it was okay because this movie's just so good but like anytime she was in it all of her scenes she served down and i will insert my favorite moments i think it was like three i'll insert them all back to back to back enjoy <laughs> You are a family of influencers. The mom is the manager. You're dating a basketball player, but he's constantly cheating on you. And if that isn't enough, all your names start with the same letter. Oh, nice. Your show's canceled. Your show's canceled. It's back. Whoa. Stage combat. What is it? What is it? It's the art of surprise. It pushes the envelope of what theater can be. Absolutely. But also, what do we think it is? It causes a heart to skip a beat, but safely. Does anybody have an answer that's like not poetry? Maybe? You know what I mean? Like a legal definition of what it is. Basically like teaching us how to fight. Oh. Welcome to Adirondacks. You guys having fun? Enjoying the party? Oh, oh, my God, lady, why would you do that? Pissed me off, like, a lot. Whoa! Let's go! Stage combat! You think this is fun and games? Hitting. It's and not funny. You're no. right. It's art. It's not. Grow up. I think like once again we're going back to like the perfect casting I think her character was just so perfect and I feel like she was the perfect person to like play that character I don't know why it just felt so like right there's just something about like her humor the dryishness to it it was just so perfect for this character for this role and also one of my favorite parts was the moment at the end when they're doing the musical and then she's sitting there and then alan s kim comes in here and then they have a little moment and it's just like a nice little comp like a very quick little combo but i loved it and i love that crossover moment and i'll insert the short little scene that they had together here because i just need to put it in <laughs> sorry uh can someone just tell me, like, the status on this woman? Is she alive or dead? You're a liar. Excuse me? A very good one. I think you'd make a fantastic agent. I'm trying to get my company off the ground. Think about it. I'm always here. I was actually just thinking the same thing. No, for once i have a short movie talk about because that's all my notes guys that's all the notes i have on this next up i think we're watching mulligan i think mulligan's next up on the list a little animated series a little short little one season animated series and we'll see what happens oh my gosh i almost forgot to say the most important thing that i needed to say in this video camp isn't home but isn't it kind of i think it kind of is thank you see you in the next thing <laughs> Hello, hello, I just finished watching Mulligan and here we are to talk about it. Let's go. First things first, here's my outfit to try to fit the vibe of Io's character named Jason slash General Scarpasio. Trying to fit the vibe of that. He pretty much only wore like an oversized army uniform and it was green, so this is... I have a green oversized shirt. That's as close we're gonna get. I also had like a leather jacket I had on, but then I was like, that's just too much. And I kind of just like the green. I feel like just the straight green oversized shirt fits the vibe of like the oversized army thing the most. So yeah, next we are going to read the 
summary of the show because i keep forgetting and i'm not gonna forget this time after an alien attack destroys earth what's left of humanity has a chance to start all over again survivors will need to work together to avoid repeating the same mistakes okay now let's get into my general notes as per usual then we'll go into my eye of notes as per usual so overall it was a good show i actually really liked the last few episodes more so than the first handful of episodes and i feel like it was mainly because there was just more plot in the last few episodes like plot building also i think the storylines were better in the last few episodes and the joke slash comedy in the last few were better as well i think the first few ones were just like i don't know maybe like trying to find its footing kind of a vibe but it just it was just a little it was a little too cheesy and like the jokes are a little too cringe and cheesy at times i'm sorry yeah. i think my favorite one period was the last one because of just just because of what was like going on in that episode i like the story that was happening there and i like the plot going on actually i did not like the ending of the episode like the last like two three minutes i did not like that i just don't like the way the story i feel like is about to go so right no did not like the ending but the episode itself I liked the last episode the most I think. I love the majority of the characters. I feel like they all had their own like cool vibes and like very like distinctive personalities. Everyone was like different and maybe it was like two smart people but like they were smart in like two different like ways and vibes you know. Let's just list off some of my faves. Um, Simon, Dr. Braun, Io's character, General Scarpaccio slash Jason, Todd, Todd. I want to know so much more about his life and his backstory like I just I, I want to know everything about that man. <laughs> also the news guy was such an underrated character. Anytime he came on the screen had like a little one-liner just like a little tiny moment it was so fun and like cute and i'm like i want more of you now maddie mulligan the main guy he was definitely one of my least favorite characters it wasn't like i hated him he was just like a bit a bit cringe and a little bit annoying at times mm -hmm. also the senator was one of my least favorite characters and that's just for obvious reasons old white guy in politics no for the comments or statements to make on that one overall great show not a great show overall good show am i excited for season two because i said they were already renewed for season two before season one even came out honestly i feel like if season one had come out i don't think it would have gotten renewed to be completely honest but like good for them for getting renewed whatever but um am i excited for season two not really will i be watching season two sure is it like a pressing matter or am i on the edge of my seat waiting for it no and that's all I have to say on that one. Next, we're gonna go into my IO notes, baby. Let's freaking go. So like I said, she was a character in the show, Jason, General Scarpaccio. But I also saw that she had a writing credit for episode 7. And I also saw on IMDb that episode 7 is the most top rated episode of the season. Which definitely makes sense because it wasn't my favorite episode. But there was just certain moments in it that were just like really good. Which I will insert right here. Thank you. You had an empty church on Easter? I blame the aliens. Bishop Lee from the Pentecostal Bethlehem Temple of Fire and what else? No, don't write what else. What do you mean you were chiseling the side while I talked it now? All of this is on the side while you're one fast chiseler. Now just write of God and Christ Church, period. No, don't write, period. The last thing on the side should be church. Well, that's a mighty long name, Bishop. That was an issue with the guy who chiseled the sign. Dave. Let's be frank. Both of us? Won't that be confusing? No, not all names, boy. Look, you got lucky with that whole bugs are coming thing. And now you got a nice little setup. All those acolytes hanging on your every wood like an old lady's wig on Tyler Perry. On a stunt. Why do you know so much about... Every time I'm up for re-election, they make me brush up on black culture. She read it. I don't get the reference. I'm just saying people might lose faith if your prophecies forget to come true. And then we both lose out. So don't ruin this like the series finale of Girlfriend. Are you doing this? Doing what? We're falling. Okay, then this is like one of the last things. Um, I really wish her character had more scenes slash moments in the show. And not even because I like love her and like I really like her like as an actress, whatever, whatever. But because like I really actually loved the character. I will insert my two, two or three, I can't like decide right now. My two or three favorite moments of her character in the show. General Scarpaccio slash Jason. I feel like I said that wrong. He deserves a moment of silence from the crowd. So insert those clips. <laughs> Look, the president needs the truck and I can't tell you how come. He made me cross my heart, man. And I'm not looking to die. That human suit looks nothing like Hank Scarpaccio. He was an old Italian guy. This guy's crazy. Let's shoot him. We are not assassinating anyone. <laughs> oh, that's and that's pretty much it of all the notes that I have for the show. I liked it. I liked it overall. I'll watch season two eventually. Not right when it drops, but eventually. If she's not in season two, I might, I might be like, okay, I'm good. But if she is in it, I will watch it eventually. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds so mean. I didn't not like the show, I did like it. I don't know, I don't know if I'm like an animated series kind of girl. Yeah, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Next up, we are watching The Sweet East. I will see you guys then. 
Hi, I'm going to try my absolute hardest to keep this as short as possible because I already feel bad about all the things that I'm about to say about this movie. Anyway, um, let's first talk about the outfit. I attempted to give Ayo vibes this specific picture, this specific moment of her. I attempted that. I probably failed. But, like, this color kind of goes with the color of the shirt that she had on. And, like, it's giving, like, 80s-ish, I think. Am I? I don't know. Don't tell me down in the comments below if the answer is yes or if the answer is no. I don't want to know. But this is my attempt and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Do I look like a woman from the 70s in corporate America? Maybe. Am I mad about it? Maybe. <laughs> Anyway, let's freaking just talk about this movie. First things first, I'm going to read the summary of it for the people that don't know, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. A high school senior from South Carolina gets her first glimpse of the wider world, picturesque cities, and the woods of the eastern seaboard on a class trip to Washington, D.C. Let's just talk about this movie. Let's let's just talk about it. As I was writing my notes, and then like I watched it last night, so I decided to give it a day to simmer in my thoughts and like the stuff that I wanted to say about it. And I came to the conclusion that you will either love this movie or you will hate it. I feel like there's no in between about it. Like you either like the vibes that it was giving and like all of that, blah 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 blah, or you hate it and you're like, what was this nonsense? Blah 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 blah. I feel like there's no middle grounds. And where do I lie on that very like polarizing spectrum? <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but I'm sorry to say it. Um, this movie was just trying so hard to be cinematic and like artsy and like woo. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm a girl that loves a fun little cinematic movie. I'm a girl that loves a little bit of a weird movie, but this just did it in not a good way, in my opinion. In my opinion, it did it in not a good way. And in a way, it kind of gave like poor things vibes with like what it wanted to do cinematically with like some of the shots and like some of the camera work. And speaking of poor things, poor things was a weird movie, non-derogatory. This movie was a weird movie, derogatory. This movie was doing so much. And at the end of the day, I feel like it told me nothing. It gave me nothing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In my mind, in my opinion, whatever, there's a difference between being like absurd and ridiculous and like making it work within a movie and then just like doing stuff just to do stuff. Like making like weird scenes and like quirky dialogue and like doing like dumb storylines and like plot points for like literally no reason and it doesn't work within the movie and it just feels underdeveloped and like low-key kind of um stupid question mark exclamation point sorry and like i said i love poor things i'm a girl that loves a quirky like weird movie but when it just feels like you're just doing stuff just to say hey i put this storyline in hey i put this little plot point in then it's just like pick pick something and like really hone in on it don't pick a bunch of things and like give them all like half storylines and then expect it all to come together and like give something good i'm sorry i'm sorry if you love this movie and you think i'm an idiot right now like this is just my opinion like sure and that's your opinion and like like i said i feel like you either love this movie or you hate it like there's no in between with it and if you love it good for you i guess good for you i don't know <laughs> And like going back to the storylines, like what I was saying, there was like a bunch of storylines going on in this movie. They all just felt so surface level and like there was no depth and substance to any of them. And I feel like they all could have had more depth and substance to like make it something. She's like going up the east of America, whatever. So like she's like meeting different people along the way. Each one is like a little story, like the people that she meets. And like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But let's maybe cut down the amount of people so that we can give each group of people, person that she meets like a nice nicely developed storyline plot scenes dialogue <laughs> i'm sorry but like you know what i mean i don't know i think like the only storyline that was like the most developed because like it spent the most time on it i'm pretty sure was like the sir and simon rex storyline and like that was my least favorite storyline because it was so lolita-esque and predatory and i hated it and it was just giving such like the idol vibes like yeah she's in this weird relationship but don't worry she's manipulating him at the end of the day he's not manipulating her she's manipulating him that doesn't like it doesn't make the storyline any less weird and creepy like her going back to the movie her like staying with this like older older neo-nazi man and her like being like well it's okay because i'm the one holding i'm the one that has the power and holding reins like it doesn't make the storyline any less creepy and weird i'm sorry but it doesn't like i still hated it and it was still so lolita-esque and so creepy and so predatory Thank you. But like going back, like overall, I really liked the premise of the movie, like the overall idea of it. I really liked that, but I just wish it could have been done a little tiny bit differently. Like I would love to like read a book like this or like write a book like this or like see another movie like this or a TV show or something like of a person like running away from home and then like trying to discover themselves and then like they're meeting different people along the way. That sounds like a really cool movie, TV show, book, anything. Like that sounds really cool. But the way this was done just felt 
<sighs> slightly rushed and underdeveloped and then the ending like the way we full circled it all or whatever got back to where we started or whatever it was a little bit dumb it was a little bit dumb and was i scrolling on my phone for pretty much the entirety of the last 30 minutes maybe i was and what about it it was boring we were just dragging out literally nothing we were dragging out nothing i'm sorry okay so my final note that i want to say is this whole movie felt painfully painfully written by a man and if one was to tell me that Sam Levinson had a big, big hand in this, as in like directing, writing, producing it. If someone told me that, I would believe them. And take that final statement as you will. Take that as you like to perceive it. Thank you. Let's move on to my IO notes, baby. Yay! <laughs> okay, when IO and Jeremy ran onto my screen, quite literally ran onto the screen, oh, lives were changed for the better. Solely for the reason I love both of them and finally, um, finally some diversity we're getting in, so finally some black people, hi! One, two, I was so, so over. This was like right before their um, storyline started happening. It was the Simon Rex and her storyline and I was so over that storyline that I was like, oh my God, I know, Jeremy, you're here to save me and we moved on to something else. So that's another reason why I was so glad to see them run onto my screen because that meant things were changing and we were over simon rex and we were moving into goodness <laughs> was the storyline that good though overall yes it was it still felt rushed and weird like suddenly she's a film actress and like she's all over the tabloids in a matter of like weeks or something okay cool also jacob Elordi was in this part and hey <laughs> so stupid okay now going back to io and jeremy i feel like i've talked about them together because like they were together the whole time in the movie like they're a package deal so i can't talk about one without talking about the other you know what i mean so going back to them they were so 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 intense and they were so extra but it worked so perfect for their characters so like film bro but like the like on the other side of the spectrum like still so into film and like whatever but not straight white man film bro you know what i mean like the other side of it like theater kid there it is it's like very theater kid and i loved it it was perfect for the characters and they just worked off each other like so 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 well them and those scenes together i'm just like i need to see them in something else like you know it's like the io and rachel duo i need more of the io and jeremy duo give me that i don't know where and i don't know how but like give me them together again something hollywood get on that <laughs> anyway though there's a scene of theirs that i would love to like insert but it's just too long one and two like i don't want to i wouldn't want to cut out any parts of it because it's just such a consecutive like it's a one take vibe and it's just you would need everything to like get it so i'm not even gonna insert it if you watch the movie you'll definitely know what scene i'm talking about they're like talking so fast and like talking over each other and like trying to explain the movie to her because she just like auditioned for it but they also kind of like pulled her off the street and was like you're the one for the movie read this line so like it's right then i have no idea what they said in that scene but they still delivered perfectly <laughs> they delivered every line perfectly and it definitely gave like improv in the best way possible you know what Ayo Adebri needs to run the school of improv because the amount of improv she does in like shows of hers and it just works so shows and movies and it just works so well every time she needs to be teaching the kids this because some people don't have it but she has it <laughs> and final note of my Ayo notes please make my girl scream queen now like yesterday make my girl scream queen and I'm saying this solely for this reason insert the clip And there you have it. And there you have it. My girl needs to be a scream queen. She could be Jenna Ortega. Put her in a bodies, bodies, bodies type horror movie. We need that. We need more bodies, bodies, bodies type horror movies. Like, actually. And genuinely, I feel like she could have been in that. I don't know, but I wish that would have happened. But make it happen with something else. Please make my girl a scream queen. She deserves it. And that's it. That's all I have to say about this one. For the people that love this movie, continue to love it. Continue to love it and convince people like me who hate it to love it you know convince me somehow i don't know if you really want to if you're chill with me not liking it then cool because i'm chill with you liking it and if you don't like it i'm also chill with you not liking it if you're one of me i don't know what i'm saying anymore. i'm just rambling i kind of feel bad about like saying a bunch of bad stuff about this movie but at the end of the day it's just my opinions if you're taking it this seriously you're a freak <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, next up, we're watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'm so excited to be served some children's media, some children's cinema. Let's freaking go. I'm excited for that. Also, because, like, I feel like the animation in that is, like, kind of cool from, like, pictures I've seen. I don't know. I'm not even gonna try to, like, talk animation, because I am not. That's not me. I can't. I don't know. I know nothing, so I'm not even gonna pretend that I do. Thank you, your residential corporate America woman in the 70s, signing off for tonight. Clocking out. <laughs> 
Hello, I just finished watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and let's freaking talk about it. As per usual, what else is new, you know? Okay, first the outfit. I'm fully attempting to try to do Ayo's character, but she wears a yellow jacket and a black shirt, but I don't have any yellow jackets, so I decided to do black jacket, yellow shirt. And I also put on a hat. It's an attempt. It was a try, and that's that. <laughs> Let me just go into my notes. It's kind of all in one. I don't know. Like, there's not really specific, like, movie notes versus Ayo notes. It's kind of together in a way, because, like, she was in so much of the movie we love a main character Woo! so yeah it's kind of all together basically but i do have some general things like specifically towards the movie that i would like to say first so here we go hello hello what else is new i once again forgot to read the summary so here i am tapping in tuning in real fast to read the summary for this i'm sorry okay so here's the summary as brought to you by wikipedia after years of being sheltered from the human world the turtle brothers set out to win the hearts of new yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers their new friend april o'neill helps them take on a mysterious crime syndicate but they soon get in over their heads when an army of mutants is unleashed upon them that's this movie now let's go back to our regularly scheduled programming me talking about said movie bye <laughs> <laughs> overall what a cute and wholesome movie i love watching cinema meant for children because one it's just so easy to follow and it's always just like such a fun and like funny ride this movie was so so funny in so many ways i was actually so surprised most of the jokes in this and like the funny moments actually were like so good I don't know. Or maybe maybe I'm 23 with a little child brain. After like some of the stuff I've been watching, like I just wanted something lighthearted and fun, so I'm glad I got it with this. Also, I just want to say I have never seen any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles content ever. But I do remember this one time I was like at this party and I was subjected to watching the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from like the 2000s or something, and it was genuinely like so scary. The way they looked was like whoa and i hated that and i think we were like playing some game and i was just like on the tv in the background like silent teenage mutant ninja turtles live action just playing and i'm like okay what's this vibe and i tried my hardest not to pay attention to the movie because it looked a little bit scary this was not that this was like animated so i actually genuinely genuinely love the animation style in this it was so cool and it was also so funny because like it was animated but then like moments talking about like a pop culture reference or something that would be live action like there was a moment where they were like sneaking off to go see like a movie playing in the park and it showed like the projector screen of the movie playing and it was literally like live action like the normal ferris bueller movie like live action and i was like whoa i love that little mix or like blend of the two that was kind of cool and there was also this other moment where like their dad is throwing them in this little party and like there's little like figure cutouts of like famous actors like things like chris pine and like chris evans and like it's literally live action irl looking chris evans and chris pine i love the blend next the soundtrack in this was like absolutely so killer and like awesome very like 90s early 2000s rap hip-hop overall this movie felt very black but aside from some of the actors there was not one black person associated with this movie and i don't know how i feel about that maybe i'm wrong maybe there's just like their pictures on there but i was looking up and down that imdb page to find like okay i'm like somebody somebody black had to be in that writer's room somebody black had to be writing that screenplay somebody black had to be directing this and the answer was no <laughs> and i don't know how i feel about that we're just gonna move on now there were so many pop culture references in this they were beating it to the ground with how many pop culture references they had in it after like the first few times i was like wait why are we like mentioning somebody real or like a celebrity or like some famous thing that happened like every other second now and it was like kind of a crazy vibe so like i started listing them and here's my list they mentioned beyonce avengers endgame mark ruffalo specifically attack on titan adele tom brady bts there's many more but i like i forgot to like name some and usually i hate when pop culture references are put in like movies and stuff or at least like beat to death like maybe mention one thing because it is like life and we do have to maybe talk about that whatever but when you just keep mentioning it it just like it takes me out of the experience because i'm like when i'm reading a book or like when i'm watching a movie sometimes i just want to be taken out of the world i'm in now and like put into a whole different world don't mention pop culture stuff <laughs> but i will say in this movie it wasn't that annoying and i didn't hate it as much as i usually do in like books or something Thing because this was like a children's movie very lighthearted so it was okay but i just would like to put out there that i do hate when pop culture references are beat to death in books and movies and tv shows whatever and that's just how i feel sorry 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 and now i would just like to insert a couple of the moments that i really loved in this movie there were a lot and i literally have like some written down there's five written down right now but i think i need to cut that down so like i'll probably just insert three anyway let me insert a couple clips for you thank you you're welcome <laughs> it's fine prepared our whole lives for this. I've never actually been in a fight before, and I don't know if you noticed, but all I've got is a big stick. How did I end up with a big Maybe stick? Maybe confuse this sit with laughter. You're not funny enough for that, dude. Don't talk! I dream about fighting every night. you got a rage oh, problem, right? That's not a problem! <laughs> Uh, 
you're not off to a great start, guys. Look, human woman, I got a question. So, just be straight with me. Do you think there are more people like you? You know, people who will accept us? No, no, absolutely not. Um, genuinely, no. There's no way. Uh, you knew it. It's confirmed. Wait, 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 wait. If I'm being honest, I mean, the reason I'm not scared of you is, you know, you guys helped me out. And if you hadn't, and I had just, like, stumbled across you, yeah, I'd be very scared. I'd be really um, freaked out and disgusted. I just wish I could see BTS IRL. We could, uh, I guess we could sing. Yeah, we could do some of the songs for you. Yeah, I'm down. Really? That'd be great. Smooth like butter. Come on, guys. Smooth like, like butter. 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 Like criminal like undercover. Criminal undercover. <laughs> you guys don't even know the words. Um, now I'm just gonna go into Io and her character specifically. I loved April so much. Awesome character. Like that's my girl for real. I just feel like Io was so perfect for that character, especially just because like she's just a funny person. Io is just a funny person. She's hilarious. Delivery online is perfect. Comedy gold every time. And like I feel like this movie was perfect for like the kind of humor and like all that stuff because this movie was also just so funny and also the comedy in it was very like subtle subtle comedy so i feel like she was perfect for that and quite literally like anything aya was in will literally turn into comedy gold does that make sense any script that's put in our hands will turn into comedy gold does that make sense makes sense in my mind and if you get it you get it if you don't you don't i don't know anyway the last thing i want to say is i can't believe april literally had a pitch perfect puke moment and maybe I'll insert the clip. Um, puke warning, I guess. Even though it's like animated, so it's not as like crazy as like IRL puke, but it still kind of hit a little weird. So puke warning, just in case. Here it is. Enjoy. If you're if you're into that. <laughs> oh my God, are you puke girl? She's puke girl. Y'all know that is not safe. Okay. All right, stop. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, I told you. Ever since I was young, I wanted to be a journalist, and so I thought I could read the morning announcements, and you know, well. It, it didn't go so well. I don't know, maybe the cameras and the attention got to me and the anxiety made me feel like I was gonna explode and so, well... You didn't. I did. Feel the rain on your skin! <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all of my notes. Great movie though. I enjoyed it. I love, I just love something lighthearted. I needed something lighthearted. Um, yeah, that's that. Next up, we're going into Bottoms. Everybody's game. I'm so excited to rewatch that. It's gonna be the first time I fully watched it since, um, since I watched it in theaters back in literally like July, August. I think it was more August. It's also on Prime Video now, so that's awesome. Anyway, I'll see you for Bottoms and yeah. Just finished watching Bottoms, woo! I am so Bottoms coated right now. Literally that one outfit that they wore. When I remember that I had this shirt in my closet, that's what sparked the idea to like start dressing to the movie vibe. So a full circle moment now, the shirt that started it all, the shirt that gave me the idea, here it is. I'm so Bottoms. And I literally wanted to wear this for Halloween because I already had this shirt before the movie came out, whatever, whatever. And I wanted to do this for Halloween, but my friends were like, no. So then I didn't. <laughs> cool story, bro. Um, okay. Anyway, we're going into talking about bottoms. My IO notes, general notes, they're all together. Once again, we love a main character moment. And she was in the whole movie. This movie was literally about her, her and Rachel. Like, there's no need for a separation. This is all together. So let's just jump right in. Hi, another day, another moment of me forgetting to say the summary of a movie or a TV show. Woo! some things never change okay anyway here's bottoms but then i feel like you know what the reason why i forgot is because everybody knows bottoms y'all know bottoms i don't need to read this but i will because i feel like i've dug myself into a hole and i can't not read the summary of all this stuff now i've done it too much and i have to commit to the bit Here's me reading the bottom summary as brought to you by Wikipedia. All right, all right. Unpopular best friends PJ and Josie start a high school fight club to meet girls and lose their virginity. They soon find themselves in over their heads when the most popular students start beating each other up in the name of self-defense. To be honest, I feel like this summary does not do the movie justice, but I'm just gonna go with Wikipedia on this because I'm really bad at saying summaries anyway. So back to me talking about this, bye. Okay, anyway, let's just get into these notes. Um, Love this movie, obviously. This is just such like a vibe to watch with like friends. And this is the second time I watched this movie and I've watched it both alone 
but I can't wait for the day I'm on a trip with friends or something and it's nighttime and we're like okay let's turn on bottoms because this is such a movie that you watch with friends and just like gib and gab and laugh at and then you also just like see like props in the background it's like wait pointing out stuff to your friends like why is that poster like that why does the mascot literally have a huge <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It's such a movie to watch with friends. Also, I feel like it just has such cult classic vibes to it. And I have heard some people say this and then like rewatching the second time, like I fully get it. Like this is a movie that you will come back to. It's giving like the type of comedy movie you come back to and like look back onto. And it gave me the vibes of how I felt when I watched Lisa Frankenstein. Great movie, Catherine Newton. Mwah. Hope you're doing well. The vibes of that movie is very cult classic-y. And the vibes in this movie, Bottoms, is very cult classic-y. And it's like one of those that I feel like will be referred to and like talked back on for like years to come. Is that what cult classic means? Sometimes I just say words and I'm like, maybe that's what that means. Like, oh, this is campy. What does camp mean? I don't know, but it feels that way. <laughs> I love, love, love how heavily we leaned into the absurdity and the ridiculousness of this movie. Like, it was just perfect the amount of like insaneness there was to this movie but then it was also funny how there were some moments where they did like be a little bit grounded where they were like hey wait this doesn't really like track or like this doesn't make sense like there were the little moments like where you like woke up for just one second and i'll insert two of those moments right now i do want to say um i feel like you killed that guy oh yeah i mean we killed i think we killed you killed that guy. Yeah, no. he's dead. That's oh dead. Oh my god. Yeah, we killed a couple. Of, we killed. We killed a lot of guys. I let's just we'll process it later. Much later. Later. Yeah. Overall, I love the little grounded moments, but I just loved how heavily we just leaned into like absurdity and like crazy nonsense. Rachel Sinnott and Iowa Debris. How many times are you gonna say it? Those girls are the duo. They keep on giving. They'll never not give. I definitely said this during my Iowa and Rachel are single part of this video, but I will say it again because it's just so true. Those girls need to keep working together and yes, please and thank you, please and thank you, please and thank you. Keep coming out with stuff, please and thank you. And just to like harp on that even more, like that in this movie specifically, they just work off each other so well and I'll insert like maybe a moment of two or that, but like they just work off each other like perfectly. It's like hilarious. Nope. Maybe it's because we're small and he's giant, so we needed to use a little machinery. Did you ever think of that, sir? Can we just explain maybe I ourselves? Maybe should buy a gun. Okay, hold, what? Don't buy a gun. Nobody said buy a gun. Well, here's yes. the thing. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, yes, a fight club where we fucking beat each other up and shit. No, we don't. Yes. No, we don't. Shut up. Yeah, they're just, it's just, it's just too good. Um, now to speak on like PJ and Josie specifically, like their characters, they are like the perfect best friend duo. And I feel like we've seen this kind of like best friend duo or just like duo, pair duo in like so much. And it's funny because in my notes, I specifically wrote down um, Booksmart, like Beanie Feldstein, Caitlin Dever, their best friend duo in that. But now I'm also thinking about like Sweet Life is Zack and Cody, like the Zack versus the Cody. Josie is so much more Cody and PJ is so Zack, like intensity crazy. And then Cody's like going along with the plans that Zack created. Like that's so PJ, PJ Josie coded. So actually, yes to the Booksmart coded just a little bit but even more so they are zach and cody coded mm-hmm mm -hmm. yep yep also i feel like maybe greg and rally coded specifically for this one meme that i saw like a longish time ago and it's kind of funny but i feel like overall they are so zach and cody coded now i'm now that i'm really thinking about that <laughs> that just hit me like oh my god yes zach and cody for sure okay now let's move on to some honorable character mentions meaning that i love them in this movie the character and the actor and i would like to see the actor and more stuff First up, Ruby Cruz, Hazel. I loved Hazel, I loved Hazel. Perhaps one of my favorites or quite literally just my favorite period in this movie. She was great. Also, her fits were checking all the time. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Isabel Havana La Rose Lou. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I did not. Specifically for the reaction scene where she finds out Jeff is cheating. She served down in that. That was her Joker moment and it was absolutely, absolutely insane. Hazel told me that uh, he and Mrs. Callahan are at it. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> like every night, like constantly. Which <laughs> 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 is pretty fucked up. Um, even though I guess it's technically <laughs> legal, it's still <laughs> just pretty nasty, yeah. <gasps> stuff 
thank you annie annie underrated i see nobody talk about her but annie zamani wilder i hope i said that right as well she was awesome great one-liners and like little moments we'll insert a few maybe hey the prep club worked hard on those that belongs to the school oh cool so does your vagina <laughs> nice try pj but my vagina belongs to the government <laughs> super christian i know just like getting caught up in the festivities she was awesome in this i hope she does more things period mr g mr g also so many funny one-liners also so many funny little moments he was awesome he was great and i feel like i remember seeing an interview of like emma the director and rachel and um aya like in an interview and they were like emma the director she was like we just let him improv since he's such a funny person they're just like oh we let him go off the rails like do what he wants and that's why i love like just his vibe. It was great. Hey, you, overall bitch. This is you. God damn it, Jeff. What the fuck? Hey, you couldn't make that analogy with your fist? I trusted you two, and y'all exploited my solidarity. I played the role of an amazing ally. Is this about the time I said Amelia Earhart was a fake hero? Because it's true. Many a guy fly planes without crashing, but you never hear about them. And then it's like, Oh, it's so hard to be a girl. We like make less money. We have to lose our last names. I love you. I want to be with you for the rest of our lives. Oh, I love the mint green backsplash in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, you leave me for a motherfucker named Tony. And suddenly, the fucking kitchen is lime green. I think, yeah, I think that moved away from her. Us. even jeff nicholas galzantine whatever however you say that even he was good in this movie and please put in more stuff as a himbo he perfectly played himbo i believe there was nothing going on in there make him a himbo more stuff please and thank you <laughs> um next why have i not heard more people talk about this soundtrack slash score myself included i i've also been sleeping on it it's just so good and charlie xcx had a hand in it so enough said makes sense why the soundtrack is so based and so perfect it's a perfect little soundtrack it's a perfect little score i will say that thank you okay anyway now here's some randomly specific moments um about josie that i just randomly want to mention right now the moment where she's talking about her juv story and it's literally just the plot of the hunger games that was a crazy vibe <laughs> and then the moment at the end where she is like carrying jeff like through the football field like everybody's like fighting like she's like trying to carry jeff to safety why does that feel so 1917 coded <laughs> And that's all i want to say on that thank you and the final thing i want to say about this movie is that we need to go back to all movies putting outtakes and bloopers at the end of the movie because i feel like we don't do that anymore and we need to start doing that again because this movie did that and it was so funny and i'll insert some of my favorite moments of that <laughs> He's so preoccupied with his divorce. <laughs> yeah, I drink before I give to class. What? Sorry. Y'all were two of my top students, I think. Oh, no, that was two other students. But at the end of the day, it don't matter. This shit is, like, beyond me. Not beyond me, like the fake me, but beyond me, like, actually dealing with the D word. Death. No. Dinosaurs. Depression. These nuts! <laughs> I can't remember the last time a movie that I watched did that. Please, editors, directors, whoever's in charge, get back on that because it's just so funny and fun. It's just so funny and fun, and we need to run that back. Please, thank you. Please, and thank you. Um, that's all I have to say about this, though. Um, next up, we're going to be watching Clone High TV show, animated series, HBO Max, 20 episodes. Apparently, she's in a 20 for 20, though, so we'll see what that vibe is. I hope it's a little bit less of a of her and Mulligan vibe. I hope it's more, she has more of a role in this. I hope so. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I'll see you after I watch that. And thank you. What's the final bottoms line? Um, when they put Party For You by Charlie XCX at the end. That was perfect. Final thing, actually, I want to say thank you. Bye. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna need you guys to hear me out. I'm gonna need you to hear me out before you even, you have to hear me out first. You have to hear me out. <laughs> yes, I watched Clone High. Yes, let's talk about it. I'm trying to do Ayo's character. I'm trying to do her you tell me right now. And like, you can't look at this picture and say I'm not giving that. And you can't look at that and say this is not, 
this is the only thing why like she literally is the character with the most quirky craziest outfit it's too hard to replicate i could have did a cop out and did another character but i was like no this is her video like i have to do her character and this is what we came up with do not judge me it's kind of growing on me so let's just freaking talk about this dang show i'm not gonna forget to read the summary this time i've forgotten too much and i hate myself every time i do <laughs> and i hate myself every day because of it bitch perfect reference thank you okay so here's the summary of clone high historical figures who have been cloned and placed back in high school including abraham lincoln cleopatra Joan of Arc, John F. Kennedy, and more as they face the trials of normal teenage life. Did that make sense? Um, they were just gonna stick with that summary because I can't find another good one. So who cares? That's what the show's about. Literally what the show is about is what is the title? Like Clone High. These clones of famous historical figures to go in high school. Not the summary. Let's talk about it now. Hold on. Holding. Holding. As I'm filming this, I'm also camping the Ticketmaster website for Hozier tickets. The show's literally on Friday. So yeah, as I'm filming this, I'm also camping, refreshing the page a bunch of times so I, that i can get a ticket mm -hmm. yeah just girly things okay let's talk about the show though honestly i feel like this might go by fast because i feel like i don't have a lot a lot to say so let's jump right into my general notes and then we'll go into the io notes you've been here long enough you know how this thing rolls the show was very unhinged very very unhinged it honestly gave a lot of like total drama island vibes and i learned that this show is canadian and also total drama island is canadian so like maybe that's why is that a fair comparison to make i don't know i didn't do any further research seeing like oh if the same people produced this if it was on the same channel didn't do that well wasn't really bothered i loved the theme song the theme song was like so awesome probably my favorite part about the show oops but it was just so good there was not once when i wanted to skip it and i also loved they would do like different renditions of it depending on like what the episode was about sometimes so like there was a homecoming episode so then the theme song was in like a marching band it was like marching band instrumental which is so cool so homecoming coded real and then there was another episode which like was about sex education so then the theme song was like in this like jazz like saxophone theme you know like hot sexy sexy time music you know that was really cool i liked those vibes of the theme song great theme song it's like so joan joan of arc that character she was so annoying did not like her my least favorite the line she was given so cringe and cheesy the cringiest of it all and i think because of my dislike for joan when season two happened and like it was like a bunch of joan slander i was like clapping i was like yes f her i hate her yes joan slander slander she's the worst person ever blah blah, blah. and the reason why there was joan slander at the beginning of season two was because at the end of season one she like tried to kill all of her friends so that she can get into like this college she went a little crazy and i literally was like oh my god now everybody hates her good but then obviously they all became friends again and why am i feeling so pressed over a cartoon character i don't know and i look so stupid <laughs> in this outfit okay anyway i hated the joan x confucius storyline blah 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 i liked the storyline itself but i just hated that it was them too like the fake dating like oh we're fake dating so we can both get what, what we want out of these two things and then obviously we end up falling in love and falling for each other blah 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 I don't mind a fake dating trope. I like it. But with these two characters, no. Because Confucius was supposed to be with Harriet, who is Io's character, and like now he's liking Joan. No. And then there was like some other stuff that's like too hard to explain, and I'm not gonna go into it that far. Final of things, general notes. Um, the season two ending was so so evil. And if I really, really liked the show, I would be so PO'd about that ending. So PO'd. And I hope it comes back for another season for those people because like that ending's evil. It was literally like Joan was about to say, like, I love you you Abe or something but then a missile is coming down like are they gonna get blown up by a missile you have to watch the show because like it honestly just sounds like i'm saying crazy nonsense overall though i felt pretty indifferent about the show low-key it was like pulling teeth to watch like to force myself to sit down and watch it but then once i did start watching it it was like okay this is good but then the episodes were like 20 to 26 minutes and some of those episodes felt so long and i kind of hated it am i excited for season three if there's a season three coming yeah I'll watch it if she's still in it. That's all I have to say. Next up, let's talk about my IO notes. Woo! I loved her character, Harriet Tubman. She served. And this was such like a different character vibe from like other stuff I've seen her in. Usually I feel like the character she plays, like especially like in animated stuff, is like very like chill, like deadpan humor, sarcastic, dry stuff. And I feel like even like normal characters she plays and like live action stuff from what I've seen is also that same like dry humor, sarcastic, deadpan vibe. This was the opposite of that. Like Harriet was a ball of sunshine. Sunshine character to the T. Like her first scene was literally her like strolling and like doing a cartwheel it's like hey guys i'm student body president or like i'm a part of the student body something like that and i was like whoa this is different and i like this difference i like getting a different io vibe you know there was one episode where it was a musical episode and literally she was singing in it and she was singing down and if you want to know what specific song i'm talking about listen to my heart is in a twister you'll get what i mean because that song's so good and it's also like a minute and i added to my playlist because why not it was good honestly she actually had like such a big role in this compared to mulligan she had such a big role in this she was in every episode she she was actually main character herself she had her own storylines her character was such a 
romantic girl like she had so many like romance plot points she had a love triangle between her joan and jfk and then there was another tr love triangle involving her joan and confucius because like her and confucius were dating then there was like this other guy that came in that she kind of started liking i forget what his name was like toussaint or something so yeah it was like a her that toussaint guy confucius love triangle and then once she went with that guy and then was like over that guy she tried to get back to confucius but then it was a her confucius joan triangle like her character was just so romance coded and i kind of loved it romance coded sunshine coded love the vibes hold on rechecking hold your tickets really fast all right <laughs> disappointment okay but yeah that's basically it um i'll tune in for season three if she's a part of it and that's that on that next up we're finally finished with this video thank god um we're watching the bear which i'm so happy to watch like after watching this show which i really couldn't care that much about i get to rewatch the bear season one for the third time season two for the second time i am so excited to tap into that i can't wait i'll see you for my bear review blah 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 and also i find it so fitting how i'm ending with the bear because the bear was the first thing i ever saw her in oh how the circle full circle gold itself i guess sure whatever um i hate this outfit i want to take it off now but at the same time it's kind of grown on me i don't know i don't know okay so i'll see you when i talk about the bear and it's literally just gonna be me singing its praises because i know obviously i'm gonna have a freaking great time watching that <laughs> and then we're gonna be done with this video thank god Woo! three months later just kidding it's been a more than a month though and i don't even want to talk about it all right bye bye <laughs> Yes, chef. <laughs> Did I buy this um, blue apron on Amazon for $13 just for this bit? Yes. Am I going to return it tomorrow? Also, yes. Yeah. <laughs> literally i was like the bottoms outfit is the best outfit that i did for this video no this outfit is the best outfit that i did for this video <laughs> i am the bear i belong in a restaurant actually i literally don't belong in a restaurant because i would i feel like i would fold under the pressure everybody would hate me and i would like mess everything up i don't need to be in that high stakes situation no 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 but do i look like i belong in a tv show that is about cooking and maybe i could fake work in a restaurant <laughs> maybe and is that show called the bear maybe <laughs> i hate myself but yeah okay this is the fit giving sid i swear i thought she only wore like short sleeve white button-up shirts but there was one episode i don't know if i'll find the picture where she did have a long sleeve one on and she just had the sleeves rolled up so this is me doing that and then of course the scarf very sid coated yes low-key me wanting to keep this so that i can just do this costume for halloween it's so simple so easy so basic maybe i'll see a thousand other chefs especially because the new season's coming out like in june but do i care no because i feel like people did that all last year and i will be doing it this year i don't care we're talking about our final show today. Obviously, you know, it's the bear. I'm actually so glad we're ending on this. One, because like I said, all the way at the beginning of the video, the season is filming now. So it's just fitting to like talk about it all the way at the end. And two, because I just love the show so freaking much. This rewatch was awesome. I'm getting ahead of myself, but just know this is a great thing to end on. And first things first, we are going to read the summary of the show. You all should know it, probably. Oh my gosh, I just noticed there's a sock down there. I need to get rid of that. I have pants on, I promise. Anyway, now that the sock is gone, I'm going to read the summary of the show, brought to you by Wikipedia. A young chef from the fine dining world comes home to Chicago to run his family sandwich shop after a heartbreaking death in his family. A world away from what he's used to, Carmi must balance the soul-crushing realities of small business ownership, his strong-willed and- Oh, what word is that? His strong-willed and recalcitrant- Whoa. Kitchen staff and his strained familial relationships, all while grappling with the impact of his brother's suicide. As Carmi fights to transform both the shop and himself, he works alongside a rough around the edges kitchen crew that ultimately reveals itself as his chosen family okay i have a lot of notes for this i have a lot of notes the most notes that i've had for anything that i've done but at the same time i don't care because i will happily talk about this show and talk about all these notes that i have to say and i'm shaking the camera i'm sorry anyway let's just jump right into this there's not really a separation between io notes versus general notes because she's in the show the whole time big main character energy we love that and okay i'm just gonna talk about it now <laughs> so honestly re-watching this show felt so nostalgic in a way and i absolutely loved it I feel like I was transported back to good old 2022 when this dropped and I was like watching it. It just felt like that. It just felt really nostalgic. Kind of hard to explain, but it did. Um, Random-ish, kind of not really side note, but the stuff that FX like does with their shows needs to be studied because there's this show and then also like Atlanta, the show feels so similar to this. And then also Reservation Dogs, the show also feels so similar to this. And then kind of like Fargo feels a bit similar to this. None of those shows talk about anything that's remotely similar to be completely honest, but they just all have similar vibes and that needs to be studied why is it with fx shows that they're able to do that like all those shows that i just said they're all just so like 
character focus driven shows instead of like super like plotty in a way i don't know if fargo really works in these examples fargo's kind of different but like a bit of an honorable mention but honestly like reservation dogs in atlanta those shows are so like this vibe very like character focused there's like a plot going on of course but i feel like we're just like really going through the characters lives every character's deep every character has their flaws and every character has something going on that we're just learning about and we're like following these people and it's like oh my gosh i'm forming such deep connections with you and um you're fake it's crazy <laughs> and then obviously the bear it feels like it's so based on characters and like character development rather than like specific plot lines obviously there's the plot line you know in the restaurant running that trying to save the business but then in season two they find a bunch of money and now they're trying to renovate their whole place start from scratch blah 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 you know that's the plot that's going on but i feel like the character stories are what's truly like driving the show especially season two the characters are like freaking driving that show now i'm gonna have to take a moment to brag and flex and say that i personally me I was on, sorry, sorry to say with the straight face, I personally was on the bear hype slash bear train before there was even bear hype and before there was even a bear train to be on. I need to brag and flex and say that I was here from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I need to say that because all these people talking about it, oh, you just found out about it last year. Like, no, I need a moment of silence for me. I found out about this from a freaking commercial, I think. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know you from Shameless. Oh my gosh, I know you from The Punisher. Oh, I know you also from The Punisher. I need to watch this show and it looks crazy and fun and good. And I love FX on Hulu. Why not tap in? I was here and I was ready for it. Um, and yes, I just wanted to say that. I just needed to brag. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You probably hate me, but I just had to do that really fast. <laughs> Next, while I was rewatching season one, I did some very minor research, you know, as a girl does, as she's watching a TV show, as I do when I'm watching a TV show, very minor research, very small research. Um, and I saw that season one wasn't really nominated for a lot of stuff. It was very like under the radar, I guess, even though it's crazy because season one still feels so strong and like it would have deserved to like be nominated and like recognized, but it really wasn't. It was only nominated for three things and it won one of the awards and i'm just like whoa that's kind of crazy season one was so strong and i feel like it definitely deserves some recognition and then as i was doing that season one research i was like okay wait season two i know it's nominated for a lot like how much was it nominated for so much nominated for so so much and they literally swept up the emmys won every single award that they were nominated for and that is on a good show and that is on good directing and that's on good actors that's on good writers mm-hmm mm -hmm. seeing that sweep that they did at the emmys reminded me of silk sonic's grammy sweep in that little speech <laughs> Anderson back did because I think they were nominated for four things and it was also a four for four moment and then in the little speech that they gave like I think after they won the fourth fourth and final award he was like and that's what they call a clean sweep that is a clean sweep in this industry I think that is what he said am I misremembering into the video we are really trying our hardest to remain humble at this point okay but in the industry we call that a clean sweep but anyway, yeah, season one was so good and it deserved to be nominated and like recognized. But I'm glad season two also got its recognition. Okay, obvious, obvious thing, but the music and soundtrack of this show, killer, absolutely amazing. It fits the vibe so easily and completely. Whatever scene's happening, whatever like exposition, little montage, early montage moment we're getting, like it just fits the vibes perfectly every single time. There's also certain moments when the song is playing and then like the beats just hit with the editing and i'm like yes editor i love attention to details i barely know the songs but the soundtrack is still great <laughs> it looks so cool right now hey next we're going into some minor character deep dives i love everyone i love everyone i love all of them and their flaws they're all just like trying everyone in the show is just trying to be a good person everyone has like their things going on but we're all just still here for each other at the end of the day and we're all just standing by each other i forgot how much i love tina's arc slash character until i was rewatching season one i'm like oh my god like she was so mean in the beginning she's like no i don't want things to change like this is not the system like this is not the way things go and then she's like wait i want to be better i want to be better at this i want to be a great chef like blah 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 and she's also being so like nice and supportive and like mom she's always checking in on people she's always just like so sweet and nice i love tia i love you tia i don't know if those words just hit because my voice went in a whole different octave but i love tina thank you um also richie richie specifically season two richie i think season one richie he was like annoying ish whatever whatever also didn't want things to change whatever whatever and then by the end of season one he was still like a little reluctant but we could see him kind of coming around but then season two richie development i'm like being like what's my purpose like i'm 45 like i don't even know what i'm doing like i don't want to be doing sandwiches for my whole life like i don't know what's going on and like the restaurant's changing am i gonna be left behind like i don't know <laughs> richie 
Richie. And then like when he works in the best restaurant ever and then like that whole little moment. And then he's like, wait, I want to be here. I want to do this. I'm not a chef or whatever. I can't cook, but I'm good with people and I want to be here. Then he starts wearing suits and then he's just like so good. Attention to details and organized. And then in the last episode of season two, when he steps in for Sid and he just kills it. He just kills it. That five minutes. Oh my God. Next, Marcus. Marcus, come on. Obviously, his Copenhagen arc. Loved it. Loved that episode. I think the first time I watched it, I was kind of like, eh. But then the second time rewatching that episode, I loved it. I love the arc. I love Will Poulter. Hey, how you doing? And also, I found out that that episode was um, directed by Rami. Rami Youssef. Hey. Yeah, that was so cool seeing that it was directed by him. I love that. Um, Yeah. Marcus, I love you. Next, Sugar. Sugar. I love her so much. Natalie, I love you. And literally during the Christmas episode, when she's just trying to be there for her mom, she's just trying to be like a good daughter. She's just trying to be good to everyone. Like, you okay? Are you okay? Like, I want to help you. Are you good? I just wanted to give her a big hug. I just wanted to give her a big hug like Steven did in that episode. I wanted to hug her. I wanted to hold her. I wanted to tell her everything's gonna be okay. I love you. You're doing great. And Peter, Pete, I love him for her. I love him, period. He's just trying. <laughs> He's just there, Peter. But he's a good person. He's a good person, that's all that matters. And I think he's so good for her. He has a stability that she never had, like, growing up and stuff. So Peter is the perfect man for her. And he's gonna be a great dad, too. <laughs> and also, since I'm talking about characters right now, I want to say that Claire is stronger than me. Because if a man that I, like, knew from childhood or something, whatever, first, you kind of forget my name when I see you in the store. That's the first blow to my ego, a little bit. That's the first little blow. But then, that same man gives you a fake number after your ex first number he gives you a fake number you are stronger than me girl because i am not hunting that down i'm like okay it's fine i'm chilling you give me a fake number okay we're cool it's cool i'm not gonna go call his best friend and hunt it down no she's stronger than me good for her stronger than me stronger than me and now to the question of do i like claire the jury's still out on that one do i really know claire that's the real question do i know claire who is claire she's a doctor she's a childhood friend crush apparently she was like ugly when she was younger but do i know claire what's claire's last name good freaking question <laughs> there's just something about claire's character how it felt like i was being forced to like her like everybody in his family richie my fact like everybody was like claire we love claire claire bear i love her i love her claire bear we love claire bear and i'm like do i love claire bear and then i'm like i want to go against the grain i don't want to side with all these people you know what i don't like claire bear i don't like her <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. That's just how I was feeling. Will she have a bigger role season three? We'll see. We'll see. Molly Gordon, I love her. Come on, theater camp. Come on, her and um, Book Smart. Love that. Her and Shiva Baby, too. Come on, with Rachel Sennett. Let's go. But do I like Claire? Do I love Claire Bear? Jury's out on that one. I don't know. Okay, now we're kind of moving into more IO specific stuff. So, like, it's kind of funny. After all of the stuff that I've watched her in for this past month, for this whole video, it's kind of crazy seeing her in something that is probably her most serious role but my dollar more dramas like she can do it she can be serious with a hint of funny with only a hint of funny like she can do it but then it's kind of funny because i feel like in season two we really leaned into a lot more of like the comedy especially with her character still very subtle comedy just like random one-liners or like just the way the lines were delivered was very funny i found myself laughing a lot more in season two than season one and yeah take that as you would like to i don't know and now let me introduce the funniest thing that i think i've ever seen in television in recent years um season two episode two the fridge guy scene enjoy <laughs> are we still good to jam on menu later yes yeah okay. don't fridge guy Yo. i'll call him back my bad and finally finally i would like to end this long long review ramble whatever you would like to call it of the bear by saying that I am a Sid Carmi believer. So me, so me, so me, so me. I get it. I get it. I get it now. Season one, season two, when I first watched it, I was like, okay, they're just, they're friends. Why can't people be co-workers anymore? Why can't people just be friends? Why can't a guy and a girl just be friends anymore? But like re-watching, I'm like, wait, now I kind of see it. Now I kind of see it. Specifically for the panic attack scene where like everything was stressing him out, but then he thought about Sid first and then he started calming down. Hello, 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 hello. And then also the under the table scene where they're just kind of having a little heart to heart moment. Come on, how are you to not think that maybe someday, someday maybe these people could be something, something, someday maybe something, maybe something could happen. How could you maybe not think that? <laughs> <laughs> and if anything though, if anything though, if they decide not to lean that way, I'd be okay with it, whatever, whatever, because I know that at the end of the day, they are soulmates. Platonic or not, those two people, Sydney, 
Adu Adamu, I hope I said that right, and Carmen Anthony Brizado, they are soulmates no matter what. Platonic or not, they're going to be in each other's lives forever. And if it's romantic, okay, I'll go with it. And if it's just friendship, platonic, whatever, I'll go for that too. Like, she is a Brizado for life. She is a Brizado for life. Her relationship with Nat, when she made her the omelet, she's just so, in a way, you could say Richie coded, you know, because he's not related to them, but like, he's a part of the family. He's also Brizado. Like, she's not related to them, but like, she's a part of that freaking family. Sid Carmi, romantic or not, I'm here for it. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm going to leave you with some season three, four predictions, maybe specifically kind of about Sid Carmi. Sorry to say it, I guess. I didn't really talk about Marcus Sidney in this, but I feel like we have to lean into that. We have to play that out, see where that's going to go. We left it on a little bit of a weird, awkward question mark. We need to finalize that. Whether that leads to them being something, whether that leads to them really talking and being like, no, we shouldn't do that. We need to have something there. That has to be something there, and I see that happening in season three. Maybe a date or two. Maybe they date for a second, and they're like, nah. Maybe they just, like, talk about it, and it's like, nah, we shouldn't even, like, go on a date. We shouldn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. Because I also see, like, some of that same energy. Like, we're just best friends. We work together. Chosen family, you know? I see that vibes with them. But, like, we just need... Something just has to happen that we clear that up. We can't leave it on the note that we left it on with the end of season two. Like, they're gonna have to talk. Something's gonna have to happen. That's season three. And then also with Carmi and Claire, that needs to be cleared up somehow. They maybe date more. She leaves. They just have to clear that up too before we can move on to anything else so yeah those two things are gonna happen season three but then season four that's when i would believe a sid carmy moment could potentially happen and also i kind of believe that season four might be the last season they haven't said that but i could kind of smell that like i could see them just knowing like okay this is how the story's gonna go we have nothing left to say and here's our last season season four or maybe they would do a season five i'm not sure but i could see it ending sooner ish rather than like dragging anything out like they're gonna know when it's time to stop like nobody's gonna have to tell them it's time to stop you know what i mean but yeah so season four i could see um something maybe that'd be the only time maybe something potentially could happen with sin and carmy i don't know we'll see i've been talking for 40 minutes that's disgusting that's disgusting i'll leave you by saying can't wait for io debris directorial debut coming in season three baby cannot wait for that cannot wait for that Cannot wait for that. I need to literally stop talking. I've been talking for 40 minutes. How am I gonna cut this down? I'm going crazy. Okay, that's that on that. I think I'm gonna do like a ranking of everything that I watched. I might do that. So I'll see you in the next clip for that. This isn't the end just yet. This isn't the end just yet of this video. That's what I'm trying to say. See you later. See you in the next thing. Okay, thank you. Bye. <music> Hello, the time has come for me to end this video. And as I said in my last clip, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end this by ranking everything that I watched from worst to best. Her entire filmography, asterisk kind of her entire, but not really. But here we go. Here it is. To start with number 10, The Sweet East. I feel like that should probably be obvious with the way that I talked about that movie, you know, the, the review that I did of it. So yeah, this is at the bottom for me. One, because of the movie itself just wasn't a fun vibe. And two, because she was also barely in it. Her performance was great but she was in it for maybe like 10-15 minutes not enough to warrant me watching a one hour and 44 minute movie bottom of my list sorry about it next up we have dickinson i feel like this is another one that's kind of obvious because of like how i talked about that as well i'm sorry once again kind of for the same vibe as the sweeties low-key these are kind of tied for like number 10 for me but dickinson's a little bit higher because i kind of liked io's character in this more than the sweeties and i think she was in this a bit more than the sweeties also kind of not a lot but good enough low-key they're just kind of tied low-key they're just kind of died for 10 i'm sorry next up is mulligan and that's basically for the same reason as the other things but i liked this show a bit better than dickinson but she was also barely in it so it's still definitely kind of low it was overall good some parts a little cringe overall okay though so that's why it's number seven thank you <laughs> okay we slightly changed the lighting a bit i hope this is fine next up is clone high it was like an okay show i really liked her character in it but the show itself like i think i said this but it was low-key pulling teeth to watch sometimes like i just couldn't like fully tap in, but once I started watching it was good but then some episodes just truly felt way too long and I was kind of like not in the mood but I liked her character so that's why it's just here closest to the bottom it's my number six sorry about it next up we have hello goodbye and everything in between and Loki I completely forgot that I watched this so I think that's why it's just sitting right in the middle because it wasn't the worst thing ever but it also was not the best thing ever um loved Isle's performance in this her character was awesome her and Nico that duo I'll never forget it they were great so 
yeah next up is io and rachel are single this is also just something that's just like sitting in the middle not the worst thing also not the best thing definitely more leaning towards best but some of the other stuff i watched is just like higher only because like this was very short and um there was not a lot of content with it so it can't be super high but i really did enjoy that and i wish it could have been something bigger thank you next we have the teenage mutant ninja turtles movie i actually really much enjoyed that also once again though not super high up there but still was a fun funny time not much to say it was good it was a good time and now we're getting to our top three and number three is bottoms of course like of course it would have to be my top three i'm surprised it's not number one but no no it makes sense it makes sense it's perfectly number three i love this movie so crazy so absurd so ridiculous but in the best way possible and i will rewatch this for as many times as i need to it's a great movie loved it the only gripe i have with it is that it is a bit gory some of the fight scenes i'm like okay i need to look away the sounds are hurting me literally the end scene where the guy gets stabbed with the sword and miss girl is like chomping on somebody's leg okay that's too much that's too much the only gripe i have with this movie a bit too gory other than that what a fun funny time <laughs> number two is theater camp which loki feels like blasphemy because she's really not in that movie but the movie is just so so good and all of her moments in it were also so so good so it's just a perfect movie overall i know somebody's hating me for putting this over bottoms because she's like i said she's barely in this but come on this movie's just too good this movie's just too good like literally might be in my top like five of movies it's just so funny and then finally number one it should have probably been obvious but it's the bear come on literally rewatching that show best time of my life i cannot wait for season three i cannot wait for season four i love all these people i love all these characters oh my gosh i talked about it for 40 minutes straight i cut it down to 15 like i'm not gonna go on a whole rant about it right now but it's just such a good show i love the bear and i love her performance and i love it and i love it and i love it number one of course thank you all right i hope this is kind of centered enough probably not at this point i don't care but anyway that's it for this video one entire month later and we are finally done um i hope you liked it please like it this took the life out of me but the best thing i can say that came out of this is like i enjoyed enjoyed most of the stuff I watched and like I probably wouldn't have watched it if it wasn't for this video like I probably wouldn't have deep dived into Ayo Debris freaking filmography for funsies so yeah I'm glad I could do it for a video and like make some content out of it you know what I mean anyway that's it for this I definitely want to do this again with somebody else with Sabrina Carpenter perhaps because she's not just a pop princess she is an actress <laughs> she doesn't act anymore but trust and believe she was acting at one point and i would love to watch her filmography um so might do that soon don't hold me to the soon because i don't know when i can endure something like this again anyway thank you for watching let's talk about all this stuff in the comments below or something i don't know this is glitching out of there okay there you go but yeah that's it thank you for watching um this was a great time and i had a great time i don't know what else to say thank you bye Cue the Glee outro music. Da 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 da